good evening, everybody. It's uh, lovely to see you. We are not far away from the big day now. It gets more and more exciting. We gather together this evening to celebrate in our carol service. There will be carols, there will be readings, there will be songs that you know so very well. But each and every one of you is so welcome. I hope that you hear the Christmas story in a new way tonight, that something will come alive for you as you hear the readings and as we share together. The um, Citadel Singers are going to begin our worship together this evening with a wonderful song, I Want to Go to Bethlehem. To go to Jesus' crib, that's where I want to go. I want to see the things they did, I really want to know. If this could be some places in the world, I'd be able to sing to sorrow shepherds all the way. Thank you, Citadel Singers. You've actually brought home that message that I think each one of us might want to go to Bethlehem, even if only in our mind, not to actually go to Bethlehem, but to meet with our Lord Jesus. And of course, our time of Advent is a time when we prepare for the coming of a King. And that just helps us with what you've been singing in our preparation to get ready for his coming, for us to be able to meet him. We're going to watch a short video, a very strange video to be watching at the very beginning of a carol service. But I find it an absolute blessing that we as a church can bless a charity within Northern Ireland or perhaps somewhere different to thank them for the work that they continue to do in the fight for something. And Christmas is a time when we share with one another and we give gifts. And this is our time to be able to share in the giving of a gift. So we're going to watch a video to do with the charity that we are going to bless this evening uh, through our very special offering.
chest, heart and stroke within Northern Ireland. Let me tell you that the number one killer in Northern Ireland is from either having a stroke or having some kind of heart and chest issues. And this particular charity has, um, without using a pun, become very close to our heart because of the way in which my family was so affected actually two years this particular week. I had a phone call, just completely out of the blue, um, telling me that Simon needed to get to the doctors. I got home, Simon looked like he was drunk. Um, didn't know that what was going on at the time. We got him to the doctors, he was staggering around. And anybody who knows my husband knows that he likes, he's got a really good sense of humor, but he couldn't even smile. I still wasn't picking up on what was going on. It was during COVID, he had to get into the doctors by himself and he staggered all the way into the doctors, could hardly put one foot in front of the other. And the nurse, one of the local nurses, recognized Simon, quickly called the doctor and said, Simon's not well, please come out and see him, he's not well. And they called me into the surgery and while Simon was in the waiting room, we saw his mouth drop, we saw his eye drop, and then he lost complete use of his speech, and he lost complete use of the left side of his body. And the ambulance arrived, and they took him off. And that's been the rest of the story, really, that Simon um, nearly lost his life to having a stroke just two years ago now. Um, when he was taken into hospital, he was completely paralyzed on his left side. He could, he, he could hardly talk. He couldn't drink. They wouldn't let him drink because they were worried that his, his throat was completely paralyzed and he might not be able to swallow. But through the life-saving efforts of those doctors, through a block-busting drug that broke down the clot that had built in his brain, that broke down. The clot going towards his heart, that broke down as well. And the doctors did an amazing job to save his life. Simon was in hospital with that stroke and all the stroke symptoms for seven and a half weeks. And he came home and joined us. And this is what I love about this charity that we're supporting. The ongoing support from that charity enables any chest, heart and stroke. I want to say victim, but no, they're not victims. They are survivors. They are champions. They are overcomers because they have come over, overcome an absolutely debilitating illness that absolutely blindsides them. You see, to have a stroke, to have a heart attack, to have any kind of chest issues, most people think that at times it could be to do with the weight, it could be to do with your lifestyle, it could be to do with your diet. But there are those occasions when it just comes completely out of the blue. We heard this week of a Luton footballer who just collapsed on the field and he was a young, fit player. Stroke is not biased. Heart attacks are not biased. Simon had a stroke because he had an airborne infection that entered in through some kind of wound on the skin. And from that, it developed into sepsis, and then that developed into something uh, far worse, which caused the stroke to happen. And then two years later, we discover that the infection from the original stroke had done damage to his heart. And then, as you know, he's been in, he's actually had a, a valve replacement by open heart surgery. And again, the chest, heart and stroke unit are there supporting him. What they do that many people won't know about, once the hospital um, releases, discharges patients from their care, there is a little subgroup that will get in touch with any overcomer, with any member or person who has been inflicted by some kind of stroke or heart issue, 
and they will say, we have this particular course that might help you in some way. And they give a 12-week course of exercise. They talk about nutrition. They give all the information that is needed about helping them to get healthy and to build up on all of the muscles that have been lacking after having the stroke. So this, this is very, very close to us. And I thank you so much for being willing to support that. We're going to sing a carol. The Virgin Mary had a baby boy. And then the plates will come round as we share together in this collection. special offering. Thank you. Let's stand. together the total that we have raised as a group of people. Thank you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. going to sing. We'll ask for just a couple of lights on so the musicians can see what they're playing. And we're going to sing a wonderful song called Wonderful Counselor. And as that music builds, it talks about the light is coming. So as we sing, I'd like you to be able to do two things really, is to stand up and focus on the words that we're singing and sing out so wonderfully. And then I'm going to end, uh, hand out these candles. And as you receive a candle, if you could just pull out the little tag and then get that candle to light so that we've got a build-up of light happening in this hall. So let's stand and let's sing together.
walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Please be seated. And I invite you to take your candles home. If we'd had complete darkness, we would have seen the candles being lit up all around the room. We will get them across to the band at some point. But as the light, as we sang, the light will come. If we were in complete darkness, we would have, oh, thank you, we would have seen that light building up and building up. And so I invite you, when you're at home, and you've got some time just to be still in the quietness, in the preparation for Christmas Day, to light that candle and saying, we are your people seeking the light. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's have those lights on and then Anne is going to come and do our first Bible reading for us. Our reading is taken from John chapter 1, 9 to 14. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not, did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So we're going to sing again a wonderful carol, O come all ye faithful. Of course, we don't sing the very last verse of this song until we get to Christmas Day. And uh, that's one that you'll have to sing in your own homes greeting him into your home on that morning. So we'll remain seated, so we're not up and down, up and down, up and down tonight, but we will sing with absolute gusto as we sing together, O come, all ye faithful.
to move into a time of prayer. We're going to lift up our voices through singing prayer. And then we're going to have a couple of people who will pray on our behalf. But the band are going to help us to start with. That's that little reflect, refrain that we've already been singing. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And then we're going to use that same music and we're going to change the words. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy, Christ the Lord. Then we'll give him all the glory. So let's sing our prayer to the Father, to Jesus, to the Spirit, as the band help us with this singing. pray for each person here and each family that are represented. We give thanks that you hold every single one of us in your hands and we pray that as we join together in your presence here, we will take the blessing we receive, we will take it out into the cold night air, into the warmth of our families, so that our Christmas will be truly filled with your love. And we pray, dear Father, that as we gather together this evening, we will have a real sense of your presence surrounding us. That it won't just stay with us, it will go back into our families, go back into our neighbours, go back into the people that we share and do life with. And may we be able to see that Christmas is all about you, dear Jesus, and the life that you can give to each one of us. Be so very close to us as we continue to prepare for the, for the birth of that wonderful baby. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Roy is going to read to us our next Bible reading. Thank you, Roy. <coughs> reading 
is taken from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus of Messiah, he came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. We're going to sing another carol once in Royal David City. And uh, I invite you to stand as we sing <coughs> this beautiful carol together.
blessed in this congregation to have so many talented people. And um, I'm extremely pleased tonight that John is going to uh, play a solo for us. I believe Jane may be accompanying, are you? Yes, so John and Jane, wonderful couple, sharing with us their talents this evening. So John won't tell me what he's playing, he said it's a complete surprise. So um, I'll leave it to him. Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. Amen. Matthew 2, 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Mary from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. The Arab called the valley secretly, and found out from them to Bethlehem, and said, Found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had had the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Thank you.
This reading is from Luke 1, reading verses 13 to 22. The angels say to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or any other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and you will go on before the Lord in spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the Lord, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at the appointed time. Thank you. Luke chapter 1, verse, beginning at verse 30. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, his kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Amen. Now this next carol that we're going to sing, you need to take deep breaths. You need to have both feet firmly planted on the floor and this is one where you have to use your diaphragm and breathe from the diaphragm because you're supposed to hold on the glory all in one breath. So we'll see how well you do. So you can sit up straight, feet firmly planted on the ground as a singing teacher once told me and breathe from the diaphragm as we sing Angels from the Realm of Glory.
you. Did you manage to hold that all in one note? Or did you have to take a breath during it? Just <laughs> well done. So, our Christmas story has been building up all the way through the evening. We've had the angels visiting both Mary and a priest called Zachariah. We've had the shepherds. We've had the kings, the magi. We've heard about this newborn babe. But it all began so very long ago, at the very beginning of our time together, we heard the words, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. When we look at the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. When God spoke, <coughs> creation listened. When God spoke, something powerful happened and creation responded. In the beginning was the word. When God commanded, let there be light, there was light. You see, to the Jews, we, we use the word word, that it's actually a sound if you put certain letters together like the phonetic alphabet and you put words together, ka it makes a word, ka We can put words together through the sounds that we make. But for the Jews, in the beginning of time, a word was more than just a sound. Yes, a sound formed a noise, but this word was an independent existence that actually did something. At every stage in the beginning, we read in Genesis, and God said. And when God said it, something was created. A word flew into being. The word of God, a creative power. Now when scholars try to translate parts of the Bible, they use the Greek. Because Greek was a universal language back in the time of Jesus. It was a language that a lot of people were trying uh, to learn and to use. It was the most used language and so many things were written down in the Greek. And so when scholars try to look back at the Greek language, they get more of a historical account. And there are historical accounts of Jesus walking on the earth. There are historical accounts of, of a star being in the sky brighter than any other star that shone at that time. And when scholars look back over, they can look at the, these historical events and it is proven through the history books that everything we read about in the Bible happened towards Jesus' birth. Yes, there was a Roman census. Yes, the astronomers were reading the stars and they could see that there was a light that was brighter than anything else. Everything was building up in this wonderful account. And so in the Greek... This word, in the beginning was the word. The Greek used the term logos. Some of you might have heard that phrase used before, logos, meaning word. Now bear with me as this gets interesting. I'm sure you didn't expect to come for a theology time tonight that you came to hear about the baby being born and it all being lovely, warm and cosy. But I want it to be more than just that. I want something to root down that you go, ah, oh, that is absolutely amazing. 
Logos doesn't just mean word, it means reason. So for the writer of the John's Gospel who said, in the beginning was the word, he was also meaning in the beginning there was a reason for the earth to come into existence. Not only was there this breath of word, but there was a very reason for the world to come into existence. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. What on earth does this have to do with the Christmas story? <clears throat> the word of God, the very reason for God coming into the world, is for us to have life. God gave us Jesus, who was the reason to bring about relationship with God. You know, when Jesus came into the world, he came in a way that no one ever expected a Messiah to come. All the Jews have been praying for years and years and years for the Messiah to come and to save them from their oppression, to save them from their slavery. The Romans were tyrants and they wanted a saviour. The prophets have been speaking about the Messiah. The psalmists had written about the Messiah time and time and time again. And so all the Jews were praying for a Messiah. And God sent the gift of his son in a way that no one imagined him to come. But that word, that reason, came into being to show that God comes in the form of something powerful and something meaningful and that that has power and has life. The Jews in their writings in scripture also have another word for word. That, that word that brings uh, something powerful and creative. And it's written down in their literature called wisdom literature. And the Jews will live by this wisdom literature. You will see those writings in the book of Proverbs. You will see it written even in Job and, and with the Song of Solomons and Ecclesiastes. All of this wisdom literature that has been written. But the very meaning of that wisdom literature is for a way to live. It's a reason to live. <clears throat> and again, we see this intertwining with wisdom, having a reason to live and having a way to live. And we're told in scripture, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. So if the Jews are believing in the word, this creative being, and they're seeing the wisdom literature, the way of living, and they're seeing the reason for living, the picture is all building up to Jesus. The very word in the very beginning, the very reason from the very beginning for us to have life with Jesus. You know, we heard the story of Zachariah. Why did we throw him in there? We threw him in, we're well, not quite literally threw him in, that's the wrong way to describe that. But he was put into our, our readings today very quite significantly. Because Zechariah had a visit from the angel who gave him the word, gave him a powerful, creative word to say, you're going to have a son. And he's going to be the preparation for the one who is going to come and give life. But Zachariah, he looked at his circumstances around him and he spoke out words that didn't give life. He spoke out words that actually was stopping something happening. And he said, how can this be? Look at my wife, she's aged. How on earth can she have a baby? He looked at those circumstances all around him and with what he was speaking out, 
He was stopping the very plans of what God had to give. And the angel said, until you see it, you're not going to believe it, and therefore you are going to be silenced. His silence enabled the plans still to go ahead. And then let's quickly look at Mary, who we also had in our readings. This girl of perhaps 13, 14, 15, maybe just a little bit older. She'd studied the scriptures, she'd been told about the scriptures, and yet she believed. She loved God with all her heart, her soul and her mind, just as scripture had told her to. And when she is visited by the angel, she doesn't say, oh, this can't possibly happen, I'm so young. How are you going to use me at my young age? She didn't look at the circumstances around her. She believed in the word of what the angel was saying because she wanted the life that God had to give her. And she said, let it be to me as you have said. You've got a priest who has been in the temple for years and years and followed God all his life, who knew all the rules, all the regulations, and yet could not believe the word of God when it was given to him. And then we have this young girl who has heard the scriptures perhaps all of 16 years and has said, God, give me that life and let it be to me as you have promised. Oh, may that word be fulfilled. She didn't look at the circumstances as Zechariah did. She just looked at the word that was breathing life into her at that moment. And friends, that's what Christmas is about, isn't it? Us not looking at the circumstances around us, but believing that God has been given to us in the form of a word to give us life, to give us reason, to give us purpose to live. Jesus is the very reason. You might hear it being said, Jesus is the reason for the season. And it's a little trip off the tongue. But the truth is, Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He came in all its fullness to give us that abundant life. We know the story. We've heard the story. The word came into our being to give us life. He was named Emmanuel, God with us. He was named Jesus, God saves. He was named Prince of Peace, wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father. All the names that Jesus was given was to show us that we never have to live the life that we're living alone. We can have a saviour who will be with us every step of the way. In these dark days, and they are dark days, we don't know what the world is going to do. We don't know what direction the world is going to go in at the moment. It's just crazy when you... I don't even turn on the television at the moment because it's just craziness. But what are we going to have implanted in our lives that says, this is the rock I stand on, this is the life I'm living, this is the word that gives me the very reason for living and the very purpose for life. Friends, I invite you to have Jesus to be the very reason that you live. I invite you to have Jesus the Saviour, Emmanuel, who is with you regardless of the circumstances. He is there every single step of the way. Friends, let's not be a Zechariah that can't see past the circumstances, but let's be a Mary. It's like regardless of what's going to come my way, I'm going to believe that you're going to be with me every step of the way. The word was given... The word brought life. God gave us the word to give us life. Jesus, Emmanuel. We're going to stand and we're going to sing a final carol together before we hear our total raised. It's hark, the herald angels sing. Let's stand and sing this as our final carol together. Just want to say before we sing, 
Thank you to everyone who's here this evening. Thank you for the way in which you've engaged, for all of those who have taken part, for the band, for the way in which you played, John and Jane, for your musical contribution as well. I thank you. Do you know, everything that goes on here can't, can't happen without a team being involved. So thank you all for being part of that team. Let's sing. And then we'll have some announcements with the total as well. We pray for each person here and each family represented. We give you thanks that you hold every single one of them in your hands. And we pray that as they have joined together in your presence, that they will take the blessing that you have given them, that they will take it into their homes, they will take it to their neighbours, they will take it to their families, and that this Christmas will be truly filled with your love, with your presence, and with the word of life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for coming along this evening. What a miserable evening it's been. And I think that's kept some people away. But you've come along. Thank you very much for joining with us this evening. Uh, I think the first thing you should do is to announce the total, and the total raised this evening for the Northern Ireland Chest, Heart and Stroke Association is £600. Well done. Thank you so much.